Hey guys, it's Mr. Riz here. Uh, so we're gonna start section 1.6. I know we skipped a couple sections. It's just what this year, everything going on. Uh, we're just going over the things that we really need to spend time on. Those other sections will come back up uh, throughout the year. They're with like patterns and sequences and series. Um, we'll see those again later. So we'll, we'll uh, just take care of the stuff now that we need to worry about. Uh, so in this 1.6, we're gonna look at linear systems. So we're gonna be solving systems of linear equations. Uh, and we'll talk about linear inequalities too basically the same thing. Um, when it comes to finding a solution of a linear equation is we want to find the point that satisfies both the top equation and the bottom. So if we have this system of linear equations here, uh, we got x plus 2y equals 3 and x minus 2y equals 4. We're going to try to find the equation or the point that the x and y when we plug them into the top it's true and that same x and y when we plug into the bottom is true. So there's a couple different ways we can do this. The easiest way to do it is by graphing. If you can graph the equation, meaning there's only two variables, we're just gonna find the point where they intersect because that solution point will work for both the red equation and the blue equation. Now that's not the only way to do that. Another way we can do that is using substitution. So in the notes here it goes over substitution to find the values, but we'll go through this first equation together to work with substitution. You guys have probably done this before, in fact, there's another way to do this is using elimination. Um, so um, let's go ahead and solve using elimination. So, and then we'll verify our answers by graphing. So to solve by elimination, this is a review from algebra one, is we need to go ahead and find out or cancel out one of the variables. And we can do that by multiplying or um, I guess technically dividing, but we're gonna multiply and add. So if we had these variables here, I got this perfectly stacked up where, actually, no, I do not have these stacked up. That's the first goal. So let's make some steps here. So step one, we're gonna stack these up. So X, Y number, we gotta switch this around. So we got two X plus Y equals negative one. This would be a negative two X uh, plus five Y equals seven. Now, if I wanted to cancel out one of these variables, I'm gonna multiply the tops together and try to get them to be opposites, meaning I want one positive and one negative. So if I look at this, I can see here, this would be the easiest ones to eliminate the X's because all I would need to do is to multiply this top equation by three and that's all I need to do. So if I multiply this top equation by three, I'd get a six X plus three Y equals negative three. The bottom equation, I'm not going to do anything because I'd make a negative 6x plus 5y equals 7. So if we look at this, now we have opposite variables. We're, that's our goal is to line them up and multiply to get opposite variables. Now sometimes we have to multiply two things together, um, but we got opposite variables here. Once we have opposite variables, we're going to add like old school math here and simplify the equation. So 6x plus negative 6x makes it go away, it gets eliminated. That's why it's called elimination. 3y plus 5y gives us 8y, and negative three plus seven is four. Now we can solve for y and go ahead and figure out, okay, divide by, that'd be one half. Four divided by eight is 0.5 or one half. So we figured out what the x or the y value is. Our answer would be something comma one half what we're gonna do is now figure out the X. And we can take any of the equations we have here and plug in this Y value, solve for X. Uh, so let's plug it into this first one here. So two X plus Y, which is one half, would equal negative one. All right, so I will subtract the one half over and we would get, let's see, that'd be one and a half or negative three halves. Divide by two we'd get negative three fourths. So the solution point that would work for both equations would be when X is three, negative three fourths and Y is one half. And once again, we can always verify this by checking on Desmos and graphing these. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So uh, I'm gonna clear this out, negative three fourths, one half. Just kind of remember that or go back to the video to double check this. All right, so let's go to Desmos. Desmos. 
We're gonna type in the equations that we have. Now I'm gonna use the original equations in case I make two X plus Y equals negative one. Just in case if I made a mistake, two X plus Y equals negative one. And then the other equation was, oh, wrong notes, five Y minus six X equals seven. Five or five, five y minus six x equals seven. Is that right? Well, let's double check. Negative point seven five. So that's negative three quarters and one half. That's where the two lines cross. So that's our goal: finding the values that work for both of them. All right. So let's do another one here. So if you want to pause the video and try this on your own, that's a good idea. I will move on here and keep it going. So, okay, are these lined up? Are these stacked? X is on X's, Y's on Y's, numbers on numbers, good to go. So the next thing to do is to get them to be opposites. Is there anything we can do here? You know, can we multiply? Oh, okay. I can multiply the top by negative two and it will make the tops opposite. So we'd get a negative six X minus four Y equals negative 10, and we get a 6x plus 4y equals 3. We didn't change the bottom at all. When we add them together, well, something weird happens. Negative 6x plus 6 goes away. Negative 4y plus, that goes away, and we get nothing equals negative 7. So sometimes with systems of equations, you can have answers that don't work. It's just possible here that this line will never cross that line, and so we have no solution. So there's no way we can have an X. And if we just verify this on Desmos, hopefully you guys can hear my son practicing his drawing. <laughs> All right, three X plus two Y equals five. Let's see if I can memorize that as I click over Desmos. Three X plus two Y equals five. And the other one was uh, six X plus four Y equals some other number, right? Not. 10, three. If we look, those are two parallel lines, they will never cross. So that does happen. You just gotta watch out for that. Okay, we'll talk about this next one in the next video, but on the CYU, what we're gonna do is try to find where they work. And is that it? So yeah, the crazy ones are next. So the crazy stuff is next. So what I wanna do now is to open up the CYU, kind of help you guys out with a little bit, see if there's any that you guys would have trouble with. So this problem C, stack them up, eliminate them, find the X and Y that works. Okay, so when you have a three digit one here, what you wanna do is remember every point has an X, Y, and Z. So you guys are gonna go ahead and take a guess, you know, maybe I'll guess D here. And I'm gonna plug it in to see which one works. All right, so I'm gonna make sure it works for all three equations. So if I plug seven in for X, so does seven, plus one in for y, plus one in for z, does that equal nine? It sure does, but I have to plug it in for all three. Okay, next. Does two times negative seven plus one y, or just one, plus two times one z, or does that equal three? Uh, let's see, that'd be negative 14 plus three. Okay, that wouldn't work, so I know d would not be a solution here. So. Pick one, you now you got it down here. Find the right answer. Okay. And let's see, the last problem here is another stack them up, get the answer. All right, this linear inequality, let's see, can I make this bigger for you guys? All right, this is gonna be funny, I know it is. All right, so let's try to set this up and see which one you guys could get right. So story problems here, I'll help you guys out because reading is tough in math. Chandra is on a vacation, wants to buy souvenirs for at least eight of her friends. So at least eight of her friends. A postcard costs $2.50, magnets cost $4. She could spend up to $30 for all. So which system of equation re represents the solution? So she's gonna buy postcards, which we could call X, magnets we can call Y. She's gonna buy for at least eight of her friends. So we know that X plus Y, so the amount of postcards and the amount of magnets, I'm assuming each person's gonna get one of them, She's gonna get at least eight friends, so it has to be greater than or equal to eight. Okay, so then that eliminates a couple problems. Actually, that eliminates a lot of them. 
All right, next, okay, what we gotta do is figure out the cost. Well, if it's 250 a magnet, so 250 times X plus the $4 for every postcard has to be less than or equal to the $30 total she has to spend. So if you're watching this video, you got an answer. All right, I'm gonna end this video here. Hopefully the audio has been recording because I'm at home, I don't trust my laptop. But you guys have a great day. We'll see you next time.